Welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and I'll be hanging out with you today as we continue on in our series on the origins of life. Now, I know we're in a new semester. If you're watching this, getting ready for your finals, good luck. If you're in my AP Bio class, happy new semester. So topic for the day is going to be early Earth and conditions of early Earth. Here are your objectives. So first one and only one, discuss major steps in the formation of life on Earth and the experiments that lend support to the theory. So in our previous videos, we talked about the mechanisms of, of evolution, basically how natural selection and all of that works and gets us to new species. The thing we didn't talk about was how life on Earth actually originated. And before we jump in today, into today, I will say that the first kind of first steps of the origin of life on Earth are the most speculative, then beyond that, each of these steps that I'm going to talk about have had some uh, experimental proof in a lab to kind of back up the idea. So do note before we get into this that there is a fair amount of scientific evidence supporting the theories that we are going to talk about. So to start out with, let's talk about what early Earth might have been like. Um, early Earth would have formed under very extreme conditions. It was probably formed as an aggregation of dust and particles and stuff that were orbiting the early sun. Um, the early universe, or not the early universe, but our early solar system would have been a really rough place. Earth would have been regularly bombarded by meteorites and asteroids. It would have been very hot, would have been volcanic. The atmosphere was likely a toxic mix of carbon dioxide and water vapor and methane and some other pretty nasty chemicals. So it was not a happy place. <laughs> And the idea basically is that it was under these conditions that life, or at least the compounds that began life, started to form. And actually, scientists think that these conditions might have been what helped to catalyze the early reactions in the first steps of life to get our first organic um, molecules. So before I go through each of the steps and the experiments and whatnot, let's look at a basic progression of how we got, or how scientists think we got from no life to the life we see today. So there's basically four major steps. First thing you got to do is you got to have the abiotic synthesis of organic molecules. So you've got to go from a completely inorganic world where there are no carbon-containing molecules that could be useful to life to a place where organic molecules exist. Second thing is you've got to use those organic molecules to form macromolecules because life today depends on large macromolecules. You got to take those macromolecules and package them up into cells. Cells are needed to keep an internal condition that is different from the outside condition. They carry things, they're responsible for replication. So you got to have those cells. And finally, you have to get self replicating molecules because if there is not the ability to pass on information, if there's not the ability for molecules to, <clears throat> excuse me, replicate themselves, then life can't go forward. So that's the basic idea. Let's go through each one of those individually. First one, most famous one, and we've talked about this previously, <clears throat> is the synthesis of organic compounds. So early Earth obviously probably started out with no organic compounds. There's probably a lot of carbon-containing compounds around, but nothing that would have resembled living or molecules that could be used to make living things. We've talked about Miller-Urey and their famous experiment where they simulated conditions that they thought would have been present in the early atmosphere and then out of that simulation, they got um, amino acids and other organic molecules. Since people have shown that there were probably some problems with the assumptions they made about the early atmosphere, um, <clears throat> scientists now think that the atmosphere was far different than what Miller and Neary used in their setup. But we can say that over the last, their experiment was 50, done in 1953, so over the last almost 60 years since their experiment has been done, Multiple different combinations of gases have been used. Um, all hypotheses around what early Earth might have been like have been tested. And most of those experiments, or many of those experiments, have yielded um, organic molecules. So it's been shown that under many different conditions, abiotic um, conditions can form organic compounds. Now, there are some other ideas about where the first organic compounds came from. There was a meteorite that landed in Australia in 1969 that contained many amino acids and some lipids and carbohydrates. So there's the idea that organic compounds could have actually come from outer space. Sounds a little far-fetched, but the meteorite does seem to lend a little proof to that. 
There have also been some recent experiments that have shown that maybe instead of forming in the early atmosphere, the first organic molecules might have formed around volcanic vents under the ocean. Um, there are vents under the ocean that spew hot water out of the Earth's mantle. It carries a lot of minerals with it. Those minerals, along with seawater, <clears throat> may have combined to form the first organic compounds. Also, experiments have shown that conditions um, present around volcanic events where a volcanic eruption is happening can also form organic compounds. So obviously we can't roll the clock back to see what early earth was exactly like and how that first step from nothing organic to organic compounds happened, but many different hypotheses have led to experiments which have produced organic compounds from abiotic, abiotic conditions. So once you get your organic compounds, you got to take those compounds and get them together into macromolecules. Those are those molecules we talked about, proteins, carbs, nucleic acids, and oh, the last one's escaping me right now, lipids. Thank you. Um, scientists have shown that using basic precursor building blocks, so using the amino acids that may have been formed in the early earth that we just talked about, um, you can take those precursors and drip them over hot rock or clay or something like that that may have been present in the early earth. And once they are dropped onto that rock or clay that's hot, they will self-assemble into macromolecules without using enzymes or anything like that. So this is a pretty interesting step because you're taking the molecules that may have formed on early earth as shown in Miller-Urey style experiments and taking those and dropping them on hot rock and getting actual macromolecules. So we've got our macromolecules now. Next big step is we need to get those macromolecules into a membrane. And experiments have been done showing that vesicles can be formed using basic components that may have been present after the synthesis of the first organic compounds. Um, there's a lot of chemicals or a lot of compounds that, that will self-assemble into membranes. And I mean, a simple, easy example is, you've seen this anytime oil is dropped into water, you dump that oil into the water and the oil automatically clumps up and forms a small vesicle with a membrane around the outside. Protocells are important because this is the basis from which you would grow, from which you would divide. Um, they form a surrounding barrier that is selectively permeable. They keep internal conditions different from external conditions. So it's really important that there is a membrane that can hold all of our material that is being formed. Um, some experiments have shown that a type of volcanic ash when added to a solution that has the necessary chemicals for a protocell can greatly enhance the formation of protocells. So if our early earth was very volcanic and this ash was around, it's possible that that ash may have helped to form the early protocell vesicles that our molecules could have rested within. And last step, and this is the big one, you've got to be able to replicate if life is to go forward and if natural selection is going to work. So back in the early 80s, I believe there was a guy at the University of Colorado named Thomas Check and another guy at Yale named, I believe, Stanley Altman. Last name's Altman. Um, they did a lot of work around RNA and these compounds called ribozymes. A ribozyme is essentially a strand of RNA that can self-edit and self-replicate. And in this process, essentially, the molecule, obviously, it's not a living, thinking molecule. It's just searching for stability. So it's trying to move from a conformation that is less stable into a conformation that is more stable. Now, unlike DNA that has its nice, pretty, stable double helix, RNA is, remember, single-stranded. So there are all sorts of different forms and shapes of RNA. Scientists have shown that using basic um, organic components that could have been formed in early earth. Those components can assemble into RNA molecules and some of those RNA molecules have the capability to self-replicate. So this obviously would be a huge step because if RNA can self-replicate then you've got a molecule that is replicatable, it is information carrying. Those molecules could have hung out inside those vesicles that we just talked about and once you've got this thing that can start to self-replicate, then you offer the possibility of mutations that natural selection can act on and the ability to pass information from one generation to the next as those vesicles that are carrying our RNA separate and divide. So that is basic hypothesis on how life on Earth got started. Obviously, 
you have to make some huge steps even after you've got this RNA into our vesicles. But these are some ideas, and most of these ideas have been tested in a laboratory setting. So they do have a pretty decent amount of scientific weight and evidence behind them. Um, I hope that that little tutorial was helpful. Maybe it'll give you a little foundation to start thinking about um, the beginnings of life on Earth. Welcome to a new semester if you're in AP Bio, or good luck with finals if you're trying to wrap up. We'll see you again.